Welcome back to Rob Built. Today we're learning how to build this cable railing. This cable railing. I'm going to be utilizing the existing railing on my house. Uh, this isn't from the ground up. I mean, I'm basically going to be taking off all the wood because it's rotting, tracing all the angles and reinstalling it. If you're doing your build from the ground up, this may not be the tutorial for you. For me specifically, I'm working on, uh, I'm focusing on the cable railing, teaching you how to do that aspect. And then you'll obviously have to modify it based on your uh, rail. Now that the rail's done, I'm going to teach you how to do the actual cable part of this. Um, there are a few components that come with the kit I bought. I bought it on Amazon for about $30, but because my railing was so big, I had to buy three kits. Uh, so about $120 just in the cable railing itself. And then the actual cable railing, uh, you can get on Amazon as well. I got it from Harbor Freight. At Harbor Freight, it's like $9 for the three millimeter cable. Uh, it's going to be a lot cheap for a hundred feet. It's going to be a lot cheaper than you're going to find anywhere else. So you've got a few different components. You've got your cable, you've got your crimps, you've got your turnbuckle, and then you've got your D-strap or your eye loop, whatever you want to call it. So first things first, first things first, from uh, Espana Barcelona, you're going to want to measure out pretty much uh, all where your eye loop, <sighs> what? You're going to want to measure out where all of your eye loops go. So knowing that my uh, code is every four inches, I started in the middle, in the middle and then I went every three and a half inches just to kind of keep it perfectly even here. But I did this for reference just so I kind of had the process down. Okay, first things first, you're going to take your cable and you're going to loop it through your crimp. Once it's looped through your crimp, you're going to loop it through your, your eye strap, your D strap, your D strap. Your... Loop, I don't freaking know what they're called. Just look it up. And then you're gonna loop it through your other, the other end of the crimp. You're gonna pull tight. Then you'll take your, um, I got this from a Home Depot, it's called the swagging tool. It's essentially a bolt cutter, but uh, I think it's specifically for crimping. So I think it was like $30. <laughs> I'm probably gonna return it. But this is what you use to, to crimp. Definitely a much easier job with two people. Because while you set it in place, the other person can use a bolt cutter. I'm gonna be a little bit on the struggle bus here and that's that's fine. We're learning. We're learning together. Luckily I can just cut to me actually doing this correctly and boom it's crimped. So uh, the loop is a little bigger than I normally would like it but uh, you know redoing it would require so much work. Next step you want to take your turn turnbreaker. All right you want to take your turnbuckle and completely open it to the widest position because this is what you're going to use to get your slat you're going to want to loosely put your cable in and then you're going to use your turnbuckle to either tighten or loosen it but really just tighten it and that's how you get a very tight cable okay you want your turnbuckle inside of your uh let's just agree i'm going to call these uh eye loops cool And you want to screw your eye loop back in. I don't know if I had a dollar for it, but I only said that. And you're going to try to... Come on, Tars! Come on, Tars! And then here you're going to decide how much cable you really need. I like to leave a little bit extra because I'm extra like that. And leave yourself some room for error. So I know it's about right there. I bought these cable cutters from Harbor Freight. There's a FedEx truck. What does this, this guy do? I got these cable cutters from Harbor Freight for about $5. Uh, they are absolute garbage. Invest in good cable cutters if that's what you want to do. For me, I'm going to use my grinder to do it. Do not do this. It is very dangerous. Same process. Run your, your crimp through. Okay, run it through your turnbuckle and right through your crimper, uh, right through your crimp. Be really careful when you're threading this because you can stab yourself in the fingers with the, all the uh, frayed cables. Cussed a lot doing this. 
Pull it tight again. Okay, I'm at the unfortunate spot where I actually didn't pull enough of this cable out. It's okay, we're learning together. Please keep watching. And we're back! I redid it. So now, when I tighten this, it should be a very tight cable. Let's see. And there you have it. A tight ass cable. Practically play the harp on this or the guitar. I'm gonna time lapse the rest, but that is the basic rundown. So you run it through, you crimp it, or sorry, you put your crimp in first, you run it through the D strap or the I loop. Uh, once it's run through, you put it on the other end of the crimp. You actually crimp it with your crimping tool. Then you go to the other side, you uh, put the crimp in again, run it through the turnbuckle, leave yourself some slack, run it through the other crimp, crimp it. Uh, you know, then you're gonna have to cut your leftover cable and then you tighten. Uh, really not that hard. It, these three right here took me much longer than I'm proud to admit, but uh, once you kind of get in the groove of everything, it goes by super quick, I think, probably. So the way I just explained crimping your cable once you thread it through your eye strap does technically work, but towards the end of this tutorial you'll see I quickly changed my method. While this way works, it's just inefficient and more difficult to do if you're working alone since you don't have anyone that can hold the cable while you crimp it. I also cut the cable with my grinder every time I finished a strand, but again I realized it's best to just wait until the end so that you can cut them all together. A good tip here is to attach all your eye straps on one side with the turnbuckles already inside of them at the very beginning. Again, just more efficient than having to switch tools every time you're onto a new strand. In my opinion, there's no way to do this project accurately without creating a jig or template for yourself. I used a 1x4 since it would sit flush on the 4x4 posts of my railing, and I started by marking the center of my 1x4 and then marking lines every 4 inches. From there, I placed my eye loops over those lines and pre-drilled my pilot holes. You can spend as much or little time as you want measuring and getting these precise. My first jig definitely wasn't perfect, but I had to create several jigs for my specific rail and project and I quickly realized the importance of taking your time. I bought a drill guide to help me drill a 37 degree angled hole through my center post where I'd be feeding my cable. Unfortunately, the drill guide only had increments of 15 degrees, so I had to eyeball it a little bit. But for the most part, I think it turned out okay. Okay, let's talk about the next section of my rail. So it's basically gonna be the same concept. As you can see, there are two different sections here, meaning instead of putting your turnbuckles here in the middle, you're gonna wanna drill holes and run your cable straight through. So I made this jig here. Uh, there wasn't a lot of supporting kind of research for this. Uh, I'm sure it's out there, I just couldn't find it. Basically, you're gonna wanna drill your holes at 37 degree angles, which is uh, the kind of the angle of my rail. Yours might vary a little bit. Um, that way, whenever your cable runs through, it runs diagonally, because if you drill straight, it's gonna go straight through your pole and then it's gonna go up like that. Uh, it's not gonna look quite as clean. And remember, we're doing that because if you were to put your turnbuckles here and then start over in this section, it's gonna be nearly impossible to line up all of your cables on this section with your cables up there. So to give you that clean, even slope, you're gonna have to drill through your middle uh, or else your rail is gonna look a little janky. There are several ways to do this. This is uh, the way I've come up with it. We'll see, it may not work. I may cry at the end of this because if I had to redo this rail, well, I wouldn't. I would just have a janky rail. Do it right the first time and uh, you won't have to cry yourself to sleep every night. I started by placing my jig on the rail and making sure it was plumb. I then attached it to the 4x4 post with a couple of clamps so that it wouldn't move when I drilled my pilot holes. Again, take your time here because if your holes aren't plumb, you're going to wind up with crooked cabling. Once my holes were drilled, I started screwing in my eye loops all at once. If I could go back, I would have only screwed in one side of each eye loop and placed a pre-crimped cable loop into it, and then I would have screwed the other side of the eye loop into the 4x4. If that doesn't make sense to you now, you'll see what I mean in just a second. Here's where I really hit my groove and figured out how to streamline the entire process. I started by screwing every eye loop and turnbuckle on the left side here. Then I completely opened the turnbuckles to their widest position. This took me a while to do and to be honest, it was pretty tedious, but in the long run it did save me a lot of time to do it this way. Once the turnbuckles were on, I started pre-making my cable loops, 
and once each loop was made, I placed it inside the eye strap and fastened the eye strap to the post. Then I'd run my cable to the other side through the turnbuckle, crimp it, and start on the next strand. I created a couple more jigs and went to work on the final posts. There's not a lot of new news here, I'm just showing you a different angle and how efficient I got towards the end of this process. I really wish I would have figured out this refined step-by-step -step process a little earlier, but that's sort of how these things work. You get better as you go. The first three quarters of this rail took me a long time, but once I refined my technique, the final leg of the install was super quick. I wouldn't say this project was easy, even though I thought it would be, because it did take some serious planning and prep work, but I do think that anyone that's somewhat handy can figure it out, especially if they watch this video. And of course I waited until the very end to tighten my cables because it's oh so satisfying to watch and do it all at once. All in all, I'd say this project cost me just over $500 total if you include the wood for the railing, the paint, and the cabling system. But if we're just talking about the actual cabling system, then my total project cost was around $90. I'm pretty proud of this one, especially since it's taken me three years to get around to actually doing it. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more of my projects and weirdness, be sure to annihilate that subscribe button for me, okay?